Yes, we decided to upgrade our solar system. We had quite a few troubles in Colorado. First of all, I don't think the sun was as high in the sky because when I was doing the testing, we were in California and we found out that our property in Colorado, the elevation's 8,100 feet. So the sun was kind of more on a horizon arc and the panels kept blowing over. Also, what I figured out was the charge controllers that came with those portable solar panels were PWM controllers, which basically means pulse width modulated, which is less efficient and cannot optimize for voltage differences. Um, no load optimization, nothing. Basically how they were working was almost like a battery tender in a way where it kind of gives off um, some amperage and then it stops and then it gives off some amperage. I was able to tell that from an amp meter that I had hooked up to it where it kept turning on and off. So even though the 900 potential watts that we had there was more than enough, the little charge controllers kept turning on and off. So upon further research, we are upgrading to MPPT controllers, which basically stands for maximum power point tracking. They're more efficient. They can optimize for voltage differences and DC load optimization. All that kind of just basically means they're more expensive. So basically what we're gonna do is, this is a 100 watt panel and I bought 10 of these to put on top of the trailer. So that's a thousand watts and I'm going to be running them through a 100 watt charge controller. I bought a 60 watt charge controller. I'm gonna use that to power the, um, the portable ones. I have to make a, an adapter to make those work. And then we're also upgrading the battery. So I'm not gonna use a, a lead acid car battery anymore. I'm gonna use this bad boy. Now it was kind of hard to get. I kind of had to order it in advance but I got an SOK battery, which has uh, 206 amp hours. It also, this is the, the high-end model, which has an internal uh, heater. It's on, it's metal. It's, it's pretty much overkill for what we need, and we can add more of these if we want to. So more on the panels we got. I got the mono crystalline panels. I watched a bunch of YouTube videos. Um, pretty much people were going back and forth about whether monocrystalline or polycrystalline were better. I went with the mono. The manufacturers say they're better. They're slightly more efficient. They're a tiny bit more expensive. It was pretty negligible. How I got to this size was I measured the top of the trailer and they, they sell the 100 amp and other ones in a bunch of different lengths and widths. This is the, this is the size I chose so that I could shoehorn as many on there as I could. So I'm fitting 10 on there, which is way more than I need, but I don't know what I'm gonna be using the trailer for in the future, such as building a house, building a cabin. I want as much potential power as I can. So how we're gonna mount it is I'm gonna use this extruded T-slot aluminum. It's kind of overkill, but it's, it's all the way on top of the trailer. It's gonna be hitting all this wind as we're driving. I kind of wanna overbuild it because I don't wanna think about it. Like, I just wanna know that it's up there and it's secure. Today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay everything out. I'm going to loosely bolt everything up so that I can get the dimension for some more um, L 90 degree aluminum that I need to order. So I think we're gonna get started on that. I, I still need to order a ton more wire. It's actually on its way. Here's a crimper that I got. So I got, I got plenty of parts so far. I just was ordering stuff well in advance because of the supply chain issues. So I also wanted to show you guys just how high up to the top of the trailer it is where I'm gonna be mounting these. I'm basically six, six foot four inches. That's how high up it is. So I'm probably gonna build the whole structure on the ground and then I have an idea how to lift it up, roll it over, set it down. Most of the wires are gonna be coming in on the top right here through some uh, solar glands and because the charge controllers are going to be right here on the inside but it is a pretty big project because of how high up that is okay so we got all 10 of our solar panels in and before i start building the bracketry or anything i want to test to make sure that they're all giving uh relatively the same voltage so we're going to write down the voltage to everyone so before I put them up, I know that they're all 
pumping out the same amount of current because it'd be really bad if I got them all mounted up on top of the trailer then to find out something's wonky. So right now this one is pumping out a uh, 20.8 volts. The other thing to do is make sure it's a very sunny, cloud-free day and then to do it all at the same time and then you give yourself a bit of a margin as long as they're all within the 20 volt range I think I'd be pretty good if one of them's dramatically lower like 10 volts even 15 I would be kind of a little skeptical so we're gonna get started all right so you don't necessarily need to do this but I highly recommend it just so that you know all the panels are working and if you have any troubleshooting in the future you'll know that you started out with all the panels working Okay, we're done testing them all. Get this. There's all the voltage. So the first one was about one volt less, but after we tested that one, somehow the sun just kind of peaked out and got brighter, and that's why it's best to do this all at once and with no clouds where the sun keeps coming in and out. But I can physically feel the sun more right now, so I have a feeling if we went back and tested that one, it would be in the 21 range. So see it right there so I'm using these alligator clips right you can see how they're just jammed into the connections so I'm happy enough now to box these back up and to move on to the next step um, their quality control was pretty good no problems so far HQST um, I mean it says their their open current is supposed to be in the 21.6 and that's what we were finding so our next step would be to start uh, uh, mounting them and doing all the wiring harness but you'll see that next so this part is going to be the most crucial to double check our dimensions to make sure everything will fit on top of the trailer uh, make sure that there's no hidden uh, extra clearances that we're going to need because it's not going to be together like this again until it's in the final assembly and I'm very committed of having it 10 feet off, off the ground and about to put on the trailer. So I need to figure out if there's any problems right here. Also, this is crucial for the 90 degree aluminum, figuring out how long exactly it's going to need to be because I'm going to get that cut to length. Okay. Got all that loosely bolted together. It's kind of funny when you build something like this that you've been measuring forever and it just looks like a double checking to make sure that whether this is going to fit on top of the trailer. It actually does. Surprisingly enough, I have it fits within a quarter of an inch. So that's pretty close. So basically, why I'm doing this, so there's going to be another set. On that side of course so then there'd be two four six eight ten so the reason I set this up right now was because of all of the slack and slop between where the mount and the solar panel is you can see it's about a quarter of an inch but you you times a quarter inch all the way across it adds up um, I wanted to measure the ends of these because what's cool about these extruded aluminum pieces is that's already ready to be tapped so i can tap put threads in i can tap all of these because basically right here is where the angle iron is going to go it's going to go like this and then out and then i'm going to drill in like this and that's how it's going to be mounted to the roof of the trailer another thing i wanted to quickly touch on the mounts uh, the solar panels don't come with the mounts but amazon has tons of mounts and of course, like always, there'll be tons of links to everything that we bought in the description. But these mounts are actually upside down. So here's one of the mounts. So basically, they would want the mount like that. And if you can imagine, this is where the bottom of the solar panel would be. So it would be literally that much higher. But if I flip it over, right... much more lower because one of the things I'm concerned about it's probably not a big deal but one of the con things I'm concerned about is just wind getting underneath these and ripping them off the trailer so as low profile down as possible is what I was shooting for 
So basically now I'm just gonna measure on center to this as best I can to this hole. But pretty much I'm gonna go from this hole to those, this hole to those, and then so on and so forth. So for one whole side, I have the dimensions that I'm looking for. Also, another thing to consider for me at least is the front part of my trailer is pretty flat. Once you start getting to this point of the trailer, it's kind of curved. Well, curved this way. So these are probably gonna have to be a little bit higher than, than this. I can make them all the same height, but if I drop this down, there'll be maybe a tendency for less wind to get underneath everything. So if I drop this side down, so it might look kind of interesting. So the front panels might be slightly angled down. The middle panels, the middle three might be flat and then the, the back one might be uh, angled down again. So it might be kind of just look like a hump. So I think I'm gonna go with that, but I wanted to get all of the, the, the measurements done. And then I'm gonna take all this apart and then order the side 90 degree aluminum. So I think what I'm thinking about now is two and a half inch by two and a half inch quarter inch thick. That's pretty overkill for this. So I don't think I'm gonna to have to worry about it, but I mean, you can imagine that this is a lot of solar panels and it's a big sail if wing gets underneath it the wrong way. So also it, you know, one of the things I was considering was it, it's a lot of weight up high and unfortunately there's nothing you can do about that. Like any kind of weight that you're putting in your trailer, you want to put it as low as possible and forward from the tires as possible. So closer to your vehicle that you're towing it with. Unfortunately, this just is what it is because it's solar panels and it has to be, you have to have direct line of sight to the sun. So, um, also I was going to mention everything up here is uh, stainless, 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 stainless. Um, the bolts that I'm using down here, it's a stainless bolt with a washer, another washer, and then a nylon locking nut. The only thing I couldn't get um, that was stainless was the T-slot. Um, you see it spin right there, that T-slot. Um, that piece down there, I got it in nickel-plated uh, steel, so that's all I could get. So my thought is when I'm fin in finished assembly of this, because I'm taking everything back apart now, um, all of these are gonna have Loctite. They're gonna be really torqued down, but they're gonna all have Loctite. That is nylon locking nut. Anytime you can use nylon locking nuts, especially on a vehicle that vibrates, definitely go with that. Um, as far as I know, nobody has that in nylon locking nut, so I'm gonna use um, Loctite on that. So, oh, another reason that I went with the dual um, extruded aluminum instead of the single. So basically I could have used the single in the middle of everything and then just overlapped the mounts. And you can do that too. You can overlap the mounts. But if one of these, if one of the bolts vibrates loose and it, it fails, now I have two panels that are loose instead of one. Also, this is my idea of overkill. If I was overlapping one, one's already, you know, like one's going to be higher than the other. I thought it'd be structurally stronger to do it this way. Also, having a flatter spot where two things bolt in to the, um, to the L rails that are going to go on the side, having it across like that, I thought it would give the whole structure more rigidity the thicker these were and the, the wider these were. So that, that was another reason I went with those. Um, but I was really considering just overlapping them, but then I was thinking about the overall structure of everything and these fit, and I feel like they'll make everything stronger because keep in mind right here, bolted into the L bracket is going to be two bolts, you know, so everything's going to be kind of overbuilt. So now, um, I'm just going to get to measuring everything. All right, so all of the measurements right here are incredibly crucial so that I know exactly where to drill the holes in the uh, the 90 degree aluminum. It's not gonna be together like this again until I'm in the finished assembly because of how much room it's taking up. So it has to be perfect. Okay, so we got all the measurements. There's a lot of slop in the whole system. Like it 
really expands and contracts, so the holes that I'm putting into the angle on the outside are going to have to have a lot of slop, just to make sure. Um, also, one of the cool features of this, see that groove right there? That's exactly the center of that hole. Um, it's the center of the slot, too, so if you need to drill into that. They're very user-friendly if you're used to fabricating. So now I'm going to tear everything down. I'm going to order the aluminum angle. And then um, we'll be back at this probably be almost a week to get that uh, aluminum in. And then to probably the next step actually we'll be drilling all the holes in the aluminum and then tapping all of these holes and then actually cutting these two sides. Thanks for watching. In the next episode, I tap all of the T-slot extruded aluminum and I show you how to do that and why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it. I ordered the 90 degree aluminum and we get it in and we start drilling it from all the measurements that we got in this video. And then I show you how I'm cutting all of the T-slot aluminum. It's easier than you think it is. So please stay tuned, like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.